Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Anna. I'm a little bit spooky and today we're we're a little extra spooky. We are going for some vampiric gothic romance vibes with the makeup because I was inspired by a lipstick that I picked up at the old Walmart the other day. <laughs> this is from Revlon. It's a super lustrous, but it's called Vampire Love and it's clearly where I got the lips already. But yeah, we're going to create a look kind of around this and something very a little bit ethereal, a little unworldly, a little vampy, if you will. That's, that's what I had in mind for today. So yeah, we'll be doing that and we're going to be discussing music. I go through a list of like my top, what started out was going to be a top five favorite songs. It's, I think I ended around a top 13 favorite songs. So we're going to talk about that today because why not and just chit chat about uh rant, whatever pops in my head in the video i don't even remember now because i feel like i've been sitting here for a while because i kept being distracted doing other things while i was filming anyway anyway if you want to see how i got this look and hang out with me talk about music and just playing some makeup uh we use pretty grunge today from huda beauty and short silver glow gas some, just some favorite products and yeah, just I just I wanted to feel a bit like a vampire, which is pretty much every day how I kind of want to feel. I, I wouldn't be mad at being immortal. I'm just gonna throw that out there. But anyway, I just want to see future cars. <sighs> if you want to see how I got this look, talk about some music, then go ahead and just keep on watching. But before you do, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know down below. What are your like at least like top three favorite songs because i want to go look them up and i'm gonna listen to them and i'm gonna rate them in the comments <laughs> no i'm just kidding i do i just genuinely genuinely want to know your favorite songs so yeah anyway without further ado let's get into the makeup we might be here a minute because i'm super chatty and i've just been sitting here playing and painting my face Today I want to go with kind of a gothic romance vampiric look and yeah I'm very inspired by a lipstick I picked up from Revlon. This is a super lustrous lipstick of course but guess what the shade is? Vampire Love. 777 Vampire Love. How cool is that? <laughs> and it's a beautiful kind of a <clears throat> I don't know, kind of a muted berry, and it's very pretty, so I think we're going to use that as a blush and a lipstick today, but we're going to do a kind of romantic eye to tie in, and for that I'm going to use Pretty Grunge. So yeah, let's get started. I just want pretty gothic glam today. I got my spooky mug again, where we're ants went it with this mug recently, and my Mardi Gras community coffee. I'm drinking it with a straw because it's easier. It's hard to hard to like get in there with this mug. It's it's got a bulbous head. <laughs> it's hard to do. Let's get started. Eyes are primed, brows are on, all that's linked down below, and everything else I use today, and that will be affiliate links. I, I'm gonna start with a Sigma blending brush. They are stained green. I have stained them green from a look I did the other day or a few days, weeks ago. It they're stained green. I've washed them multiple times trying to get the green off. Both of my Sigma bl <laughs> blending brush and the detail blending brush are green. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go into Pretty Grunge and we're going to start with the shade called Freedom, which is right down here. So right here, we're going to take that through the transition on the Sigma blending brush. So I'm going to start right out here, kind of high up and blend that up and out. Get kind of a contoured shape. I'm gonna bring it all the way into the inner corner of the brow right here. Do you really girl? I can't see nothing. Oh no, it's a light shade, but there's a reason. It just gives a little extra something. It's a very soft, rosy pink. All right, and then from there we're gonna go to Love Anarchy. Right here. I'm just going to take that a tad lower, right into that socket line. 
and start to define. up a little bit of definition and really coming right in here on the inner part uh, this look is gonna be gothic Lana Del Rey coated vibes I think that's that's what we're going for today all right I'm gonna jump down to the detail blending which is even greener and we're gonna take some hope, which is this one here. And come even deeper in. And a little more precise. And up and out. And just softly blend this as well. So I'm going to find the crease. Jump back to the previous brush. And go back in with just a little bit of Love Anarchy. Soften that up. Make sure we have a nice blend. And then a bit more of Freedom. That's super deep. Okay. Right. And now, I'm going to take a little bit of black eyeliner from Urban Decay. This is the 247 Black. 247 glide on eyeliner in zero I'm gonna take a little bit of this right here the outer part of the lash and into the tight line and from this outer corner it's gonna pull out just a bit I'm gonna take a liner brush and blend it I'm going to take a little detail liner brush. This is a Morphe M2500. Get a little bit of liner on this, just straight from the pencil there. And come right into the inner corner. Okay, I'm just going to kind of elongate the eye a bit. I'm going to let my eyes calm down for a second after that because it always makes them a little. So I'm going to leave the eyeliner alone for a moment. I'm going to jump back to the detail blending and I'm going to go into the shade called Maverick right here. And we're going to dust that across the blank part of the lid in a more of a diffused wash. All right, and where I want it to be more opaque, I'm going to take it on a little flat brush. I want to be a little more opaque right here, and then diffuse out. Okay, and I'm going to go back to that same detail blending, clean it off, grab a little more, touch more hope. Like just tap into it once. Okay, I redefine right there. I'm going to go back to my little angled liner brush and go into the black shade in the palette called Renegade. I'm going to tap that over the liner. This is just a matte black. Big blending brush one more time. Okay, just a touch more of hope. And that follow the same trajectory of the wing. Alright, and I'm going to tidy up. And we'll fall out here. And on the lower lash line, I'm going to take a little bit more of that black liner brush. I'm just going to go straight from the pencil and join up right here underneath. And then I'm going to set that with the black eyeshadow. Same brush. Tidy everything up with a Q-tip. Oh, I've got a little ball patch there. I'm going to fix that once my eye kind of calms down. It's a little watery. Not coffee. 
stray sparkles. Because I do have a little more detail work I want to do on the eyes for a little more precision. But for right now, I'm going to leave them there and we're going to do the rest of the face. And yes, my face is very red because I used an SPF I was allergic to again. Again. Just healed. Got over one allergic reaction. Try out something else. Did again. And it was an SPF that I've been using or used last year. Had no issues with it. So maybe it expired. I don't know. Anyway. This happened, and I'm very itchy, and nothing is working to make it better. All right, I'll take some of the Say Eliminating Gel, and we will be doing a pretty glam face, or pretty, uh, yeah, we're going in on the, the skin, really perfected and glowy, um, but full coverage-y because of the red, but we want to glow and want a little hydration in here skin is feeling some type of way. Now we take some flawless filter from Charlotte. I want an angelic glow. So give this a little buff in. Before I move on, I am going to tweak a little bit on the eyes here. I don't like how this one bit of skin doesn't have any eyeshadow on it and it just looks like a flap of skin there. I gotta fix that. It's gonna bug me. If I don't, <laughs> welcome to my brain. I'm gonna take that little flat brush. A bit of hope on it. And we're just gonna fill that in. You see what I'm talking about? That little ball patch there. When I relax my eyes, it just looks like a skin flap. <laughs> Sounds terrible, but that's what it looks like. And I don't like it. That's okay. You don't have to like everything on your face. All right, that's better. I'm gonna correct that eyeliner quickly as well because that's gonna bug me. Little liner brush. All right, I'm gonna leave that as long for real now. <laughs> and we'll finish the rest of the face here. I'm gonna do some underpainting with a bit of the Halo Glow Beauty Wand Contour in Fair Light. And just put that where I want to start to chisel out the cheeks a bit. Get that jawline snatched. Here we get a song stuck in your head and you can't stop singing it. Just randomly. The Cure popped in my head. It's called Burn. It was on the car soundtrack. It's, I think, one of my number one, like, it would be my top five favorite songs, I think. What are your top five favorite songs? Do you have a top five? I, I do, but it would take me a while to think of it. And I don't know if I could put them in order. Like ranking them, but I definitely have like a top, like top 10 really. Number one would be, and there will be your heart also by Fields and Nephilim for sure. Number one spot, that song. Burn for the Cure would be on the list. But you know, I would really have to sit down and think about the rest. Really would. Cause anytime I try to think of that kind of stuff, I just go blank. But that's, that's two songs there. Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers. So that's three. Video Games by Lana Del Rey. Four. I'm pretty sure there would be a typo negative song in there, but I'm just drawing a blank. Love you to death. So that would that be number five? Okay, I'm gonna need a top ten. Contour's done. Got a little distracted there, but I <laughs> still have it in my head and I'm like, yeah, that's a good song. All right, so I had to stop for a minute and go make a list because I need I need my brain. I need to think for seconds. So I technically have a top, I think, a top 12 songs that I'm going to list <laughs> to you of just songs that get me in my soul. They grab my soul. They grab my heart type of music or songs. 
But first, let's do some cream blush. I'm going to take the shade Vampire Love 777 on the cheeks. And we're going to underpaint with this as our cream blush. So I'm going to take it on my hand. And just scribble that on there. And I'm going to make sure I get a generous amount. And use my same little stipply brush here. It's an elf dew ended brush. I love using this for like contour cream products. For like the contour, the blush, all the things, because it's just, it's a really nice texture for all those things. All right, so we take some onto this, like this off the back of my hand, work it into the brush a bit, kind of soften it up. So I don't want to go crazy, crazy applying it and hit the backs of the cheekbones, like right in here. Anyway, so. Top 12 favorite songs. The only reason because there's one of them is kind of a tie, so I'm just going to go ahead and make it 12. And I had a real hard time narrowing it down for the 10 minutes I spent coming up this list, if that, five minutes. But unequivocally, number one is Fills of Nephilim and There Will Be Your Heart Also. That I, I can't get into it in a video, honestly, why that song means so much to me. It's I'll just cry or something and it's it's a very deep very very deep uh, thing with that song that I have same with the number two which will be the unequivocal number two. Oh geez I got 13 songs never mind 13 songs on this list but the number two spot it's gonna be love under will from fields of nephilim same reasons just it they're very sentimental they mean a lot to me they are um just special songs to me in a very, uh, like, almost spiritual way, if you will. To be morbid for a second here. And There Will Be Your Heart also is going to play at my funeral, okay? <laughs> like, deep <laughs> spiritual connection to that song. And, yeah, next on the list, the rest of these are not going to be in any order. They're just kind of songs that mean a lot to me that grab me by my heart, basically. They feel like someone's just getting me, you know? Do you know what I mean when a song moves you that way? Like it's like it's speaking to you on a another level. <laughs> the next one is gonna be Tiamat Kane. I I know that was like the single, I think off of oh, what album was that? Skeleton Key maybe? I just absolutely love that song, it, the melody and everything about it, and it makes a reference to Love Under Will from Fields of Nephilim. <laughs> Within the song, there's a, uh, they reference it with a line in the song called, in, where they say, in between the cracks and hollows, and it's like, oh, that's a reference to Love Under Will from Fields of Nephilim. For number, well, we're not really going in order, but number four that I wrote down is going to be Swallow the Sun, and the song is called when a shadow is forced into the light. I know that's that's like such a long title for a song that I never can get it out right, but that is one of the, it's such a beautiful, heavy, dark, doom metal type of song that just, oof, oof, and the lyrics are so beautiful. That whole album, honestly, from Swallow the Sun is a work of art. It is one of the most beautifully written, lyrically and musically well done albums. Just, mm. it's a, it's a hard album to listen to if you deal with grief or anything like that, but it is a beautiful album and it might could help you get through a little grief. Oh geez, I keep thinking of more songs to add to the list. I'm not going to do it now. I might have to do a, a part two to a, a top 20 songs. Maybe we'll do that one day because I just had another one pop in my head, but nope, we're sticking to the list I wrote down. Number five is going to be from AFI, a song called This Time Imperfect, which was the last song on the Sing the Sorrow album. And it was kind of a hidden track at the very, very end. This makes a beautiful blush, by the way. Look at that. How pretty. It was a sneaky little hidden track on there towards the end of the album. There was a, the last song listed on the album is uh the leaving song maybe anyways the last song the album ends 
there's a little pause and then it goes into a spoken word poetry thing and then this song comes on and it is one of those most just grab you in your soul songs the lyrical performance or the vocals Davey Havoc knocked it out of the park on that one it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful song and it's forever just a favorite and then of course as I said burned by the cure that that's my favorite cure song I love a lot of cure songs so it but that one just really skyrockets to the top out of all of them. I can't really think of a Cure song that I dislike. I enjoy all of them and some that I really love. I love like the their more darker stuff like a forest. Uh, love songs beautiful. There's so many. And I love Just Like Heaven and Pictures of You. I love those songs. Gosh, but Burn just, it hits on a different level. And then Lana Del Rey video games. Like another very sentimental song, very special song. I walked down to the aisle, walked down the aisle to the instrumental version of it. My first dance with my husband as a married couple was that song. It has very special special meaning. Let's go ahead and do some concealer before we move on to the next song. I'm gonna take Kosis concealer, take the Kosis Revealer concealer. I, I, I keep messing up the name of this concealer, but we're taking the Kosas concealer. I think it's the only one I got. Then under here, I'm gonna need some coverage today with this this skin. Next song is Tori Amos, Precious Things, from the album Little Earthquakes, which is my favorite Tori Amos album. And following that is gonna be Tori Amos again with Little Earthquakes. It's one of the songs I'd never get sick of hearing. It's just, again, a beautiful song. It gets you in the, right in your soul. I'm gonna blend this out with my little foundation brush. And next song on my list is gonna be Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers, preferably by Do Love or Will Peck and Oh, I can't remember the other guy's name. They called themselves the Unrighteous Brothers. I really enjoy their cover of it. I love Elvis's version of it. Honorable mention would be Elvis for this list with Ken Help Falling in Love. That That's going to be an honorable mention. I do love me some Elvis. And the next song on the list is Orville Peck with Hope to Die. I know, what a lovely song title, but it is one of the most beautiful songs. Trust me on that one. The vocals... The lyrics, everything in it is just spot on. The music video, amazing. He was inspired by Whitney Houston for that one. And by her version of I Will Always Love You, which I know Whitney did a great job on that, but I'm, I'm still gonna, so Dolly Parton's version hits a little different. It does. Last song on the list is going to be Roy Orbison's Crying. That, oh gosh, that took about one of those songs that gets you right in your soul. That one and Unchained Melody. Oh, there's songs that, like, I have a hard time listening to without feeling an emotional response. Like, most of these songs, that's how I feel about them. Like, the Fields of Nephilim ones. There was a long time I couldn't listen to the Fields of Nephilim songs. After I... So my mom died. It was really hard to listen to Love Under Will in particular. And another honorable mention I'm going to give to this list. Because the thing is, this list has doesn't have all my favorite bands on it. Isn't that? That's kind of strange, right? Uh, so another one that I would add to this list to round it out to be 13. That's not really an honorable mention, but it's going to be typo negative with uh, Love You to Death. That's a, that's a good song. <laughs> That's just a good song. And honestly, if I could make a list of this of just albums, Sing the Sorrow, work of art, October Rust from Type of Negative, work, work of art, Swallow the Suns, When Your Shadow is Forced into Light, work of art. Like I could I could make a list of albums that all together are just like masterpieces from start to finish. <laughs> 
here's a funny thing about me is I don't like a lot of bands. I don't like a lot of, yeah, I don't really like a, a ton of bands. I have a particular set of bands that I just passionately like. Like, it's not like a casual, I enjoy them. They're, it's bands that I, I'm like, no, I'm diehard. That's my favorite. Those are my favorite bands. And I don't need all this filler music. <laughs> I'm not, like, I can't just like, casually like a band. I don't know. I'm not, feel like some kind of connection to the music or something. I just don't care. It's got to, I got to feel something with it. I have a very kind of narrow, I guess, scope of that, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, let me know down below, like, at least like, like maybe a top three, top five songs that you like, that are your, like, ones that just, you never could get sick of, they're your ride or die type of songs that you want to hear for the rest of your life. Songs that you would want to greet you in the afterlife. That's how I feel about these songs. Like, I almost put a third Phil's and Nephilim song on this list, but I didn't want to, like, overkill on that, but it would be Summerland. I always said that when I reached the other side that I would want to be greeted, greeted with the bass line <laughs> from that song. <laughs> but it's like, I don't have strong feelings to a lot of bands and music, but the one, the songs and albums and bands that I do feel that way are artists. It's like that kind of deep feelings. Like it's a, it's a, a very much an emotional bond to the music. And I'm, I know some of that's kind of a little morbid talk there, but you girls got a, had a dark past, okay? <laughs> what can I say? All right. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to do a little more brightening with the Smashbox Halo 4-in-1 Perfector pen. Just a little more light right near. What do you guys think of the new Crow movie, by the way? Speaking of gothy things. I am not excited. Why does he look like a SoundCloud rapper? Why, why does he look like Pete Davidson? Ew. <laughs> no. I don't get the Pete Davidson appeal. Sorry. Just don't. Like, I think it's funny, but I'm just... he ain't my type, I guess. I don't know. I don't get it. Do we have to remake every movie, by the way? Will you quit trying to ruin things that are special to everybody else? The few and far between exceptions, I'd say with Stoon, as far as like, a good remake of something. But every, most of the time it's like, ugh. Please stop. <laughs> Please stop redoing these classics and ruining them. Like The Crow. The Crow didn't need a reboot. And they've been trying to reboot that movie for like 30 years now. Brandon Lee ain't been dead that long and y'all are already trying to remake the movie. And don't get me started on the sequels to that. Hot garbage. Hot water garbage. But the original masterpiece. Absolute masterpiece. The same with Interview with the Vampire. Absolute masterpiece. I watched uh, Count of Monte Cristo the other day. I forgot how much I love that movie. Speaking of just movies. <laughs> that popped in my head. But I forgot what a good movie that was. Well, Kings and Pawns bit. I hadn't watched it in a good 15 years or more. <laughs> it kind of brought me back a little bit in time to that. Odd oddly, what would most people would consider a dark time in one's life? I mean, it was. But it's weird how you could find joy in those times and maybe look back on a little bit, a little bit of a rose-colored glasses, I guess. Even though that was a really not a good, <laughs> good time. <laughs> But there was, I guess, looking back, kind of romanticized the past a little and just get nostalgic for it. And it's that kind of weird little butterfly feeling you get in your tummy for stuff like that. That movie kind of just brought me back to then. So I'm not particularly one to like harp on the past too much, the older I've gotten anyway. And I would rather think of those times in that more romanticized way, whether they were worth romanticizing or not, because it was not a, 
not a pretty time, but it's weird how you could find joy in such a dark time and happiness regardless and like just still be able to laugh. That may just be me, my family and all of us because we're, we're weirdos and have very dark humors, but it's just interesting. All right, we're going to take Smashbox Always On Skin Balancing Foundation. I think what I was originally talking about that was having a very particular like set of bands that I always want to listen to. And I think it was weird that some of the those bands didn't have songs that made this list. Because like I just really couldn't pick like one that I could single out because I enjoy the band as a whole. Like I would say like Florence and the Machine. I enjoy them as a whole. I don't think I could single out a single song. It just really wouldn't make the list, but I thoroughly enjoy like the whole another masterpiece album, Ceremonials, from Florence and the Machine. Uh, Moonspell. Moonspell's one of my absolute favorite bands, but I couldn't single out a song from them. Um, Danzig. Mm, who else? Agents of Oblivion. Which I probably could single out a couple of songs from that album. That was just like a one-off album that uh, lead singer Acid Bath did. Innsmouth. That song would probably be, that could probably be number 14 on this list, to be honest with you. All right, take this. Here he is. I haven't applied any cheek product first. I'm going to blend that out using an e.l.f. buffing brush, I believe. a yeah, buffing foundation brush. And buff this in. We'll try to cover some of this redness, girl. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. But yeah, is there an album that feels that way to you? Like, from start to finish, just like a pure work of art that you might not even be able to pick a favorite off of? Curious to know that, too. I want to know what songs you like. Because you might get me to uh, find a new band that I love. Oh, goodness gracious, I thought of a number 15 for the list. Technoir from Gunship. Oh my gosh. That has to be on the list, too. Yep, it should just be a list of 20. Because that's the thing. I have a, a slight thing, things I like. I just have a hard time narrowing down within those things. <laughs> because I love them all equally. Aside from the Fields of Nephilim stuff, those are going to be the number ones unequivocally. You're not going to argue with me about that one. <laughs> and yep, My Chemical Romance. They would be pretty high on the list. But I don't think I could single out a single song from them that would mean just the, that much to me. But gosh, I remember, what was it, Three Tears for Sweet Revenge when that came out? Oh, what a time to be alive. <laughs> and I take what music I do like very seriously, apparently. <laughs> and I try to casually like listen to music and enjoy it, but I just, I'm not fulfilled by that, I guess. It's a weird thing. And when I don't like music, that just ruins like an entire vibe for me. And I try to be chill about that and let it go. Like at the gym, I'm pretty chill about it. But like that's one thing I really disliked about going out to bars was the cheap bucks because people would play garbage on it and I'm like, oh gosh. You have another weird honorable mention for the list would be, uh, Dwight Yoakam, maybe. I like Dwight Yoakam. I like very random country songs. Like, I wouldn't say I'm a country fan, but there's like a handful of country songs that I'm just like, they're bangers. A thousand Miles From Nowhere from Dwight Yoakam. That song is amazing. It's like Orville Peck. Love him to death. I love Dolly. I love her... The original version of I Always Love You. I think it's such a beautiful song. I love Patsy Klein. I love Loretta Lynn. Dude, Loretta Lynn's got a song about punching a girl in the face. And it is hilarious. <laughs> and she was that's a sassy woman. Oh, Tammy Wynette, Stand By Your Man. 
Talk about a banger there. Oof. All right, now I'm gonna start to tap over the rest here. Let everything start to blend together. And again, I'm sure I'm missing songs because there's like Bauhaus songs, Joy Division songs, and Peter Murphy and stuff like that that I really love. Duran Duran, Come On Done. That would have to be like on a list because <laughs> I love that song so much. And I'm indecisive about the few things I love. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, I never understood until I got older. My mom wouldn't listen to music much around the house. Because she said it was made her sad. And I was like, why do you tell me I love music? And I was like, always listen to music. Now I'm like, old lady here. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I get it now. I get it. <laughs> and like those memes about playing the song over and over because it didn't make you sad enough the first time. Like, yeah, I get it now. Take some of this down on the chest. So I match. <laughs> and now all of a sudden I've got Flyleaf stuck in my head. The song I'm Alive. Which I like that song a lot. That's a good song. There we go. Foundation on. I think that is, that's going to be all the cream products. So I'm going to set down my under eye with a bit of the Halo Glow setting powder from e.l.f. On my little Sony Cash Sponge. Or... The lower puff. And another thing was weird is like I, I couldn't pin down a Nash Nail song. Like again, speaking of albums that are masterpieces from Start to Fish, Downward Spiral just has 30th anniversary. Yep, that would be one. Queen's Right, <clears throat> Queen's Right Operation Mind Crime. That's a masterpiece start to finish. Couldn't pin down a song that's a favorite off of that album. It's like, like, yeah, when I like a band, I also know like everything about them and can write you a book report basically on them. I can do it behind the music for you. <laughs> Which I thought would be a cute series to do on the channel. Be like, and makeup and music and just like go through the ins and outs of a, a particular album and just talk about it. <laughs> Cause I could do that for days. Oh, I was just gonna sit mine eyes with this. Oops, oh well. Now I'm going to take the Kosas Cloud Set Powder on the rest of the face. I do like this one under the eyes too, but I just, I really love the way the elf looks under there. I'll take this on the pore area. Just like press that in. I think, yeah, October Rust is a good one to start to finish pretty much. That's another band, like there's type of negative songs that I can't listen to because they just... <laughs> Break my heart to listen to them again, that kind of thing. Uh, can't think of the world coming down. That album, that's a hard album to listen to if you're you know, have like lost someone. Very hard album. I mean, there's even sometimes bits of October Rust that I think are a little bit hard to listen to for me. And sometimes I think it's good to, like, it somehow feels good to go listen to those things. Like, you're just in the mood to be a little sad. And you just really need to hear that music. Because it's, like, something you need to get out of your system to listen to it. And it's a cathartic, like, almost like a <sighs> release. And I think it's better than, like, sitting there trying to avoid it all the time. Even though you can hear the song in your head and you're like, I just, I really want to hear the song kind of thing. <laughs> Just go ahead and listen to the song. Just listen to the song. And let it, let it out. Now, we've done all our powder step. Okay, so now we've got the makeup set. I'm going to go ahead and kind of finish up any tweaking I want to do on the eyes. I'm going to my little mini liner brush and just touch up the wing. Oh, Lana Del Rey's Born to Die. That's a start to finish. Good one. I really, there's a lot of songs from Lana that I like, though. I really like uh, Tunnels Under Ocean Boulevard. I really like that song a lot. But I'm not a fan of the entire album. And I guess that's how people feel about, like, you no know, Taylor Swift, they think you know, her albums are, I like, especially like folklore. People talk about that album being like a work of art from start to finish, and I think it's a fine album. 
There's like, I think I like the song Cardigan, maybe? Well, I can't remember. There's a song that I liked. You know, but I'm just, it doesn't move me. I just do a little more inner corner. Kind of pull that out a little bit. All right, and then on the lower lash line, I'm going to take a little bit of Freedom. It's our lightest shade we used right here. I'm just going to add a bit of a shadow under there. The lower lash line, a bit of a smoky haze. Then we'll take a bit of Hope, same brush. These are our darkest brown I used. And all right, I'm gonna grab a bit more of Maverick and run a bit of that just there. And something else, like the older you get, you feel like maybe things don't hit the same either. Like new stuff. The last new thing that really, I think, made me feel moved was the Swallow the Sun album and Gunship's first album. <laughs> and I've enjoyed all the successive stuff from Gunship since though. Now, we can get back to the face. Do you have a little ball patch here? No, my eyes watering again. The other eye this time. And we're gonna jump over to Glowgasm from Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm gonna take some of the blushy color here. This is the Blush Pop Blush. And we're gonna put that on the cheeks over top of where we put the oh wait no first I'm gonna take the bronzer from this palette which is this right here and do a little warming up on the skin because I mean we're going vampire vampiric but we're a little sickly looking here nothing with a little bit of bronzer just just a little all right now I'll take the pop blush shade right here which is this pretty pink sheeny glorious color it's like a pink with a greeny gold shift in it we'll put that over the cream blush area and on a blending brush i'm gonna take a little more of the bronzer from this palette and just kind of merge the eye in a bit more right out here Give it a little lift, lift a roo to the outer corner. All right, and then I'm gonna take the lightest highlight in this palette, which is this really light kind of champagne golden shade, or just really light champagne. We'll hit the highest points. I'm gonna put just a touch on the brow bone. And right here, a little C shape. What's next? A bit of mascara, I believe. I'll we'll use YSL Lash Clash today. I need to use this one up. And I'm going to go ahead and curl my lashes, put the mascara on, and touch my brows. And we'll be back for the lips and finished look. And I'll see you in just a second. Just touch up brows and add a little bit of liquid liner in there and some mascara just to kind of clean things up and do a little perfecting. <sighs> anyway. For mascara I did use the YSL Lash Clash. It's still a really pretty mascara, but it's basically Lash Paradise. Let's, let's not get silly. Okay. Now I'm drinking coffee. Now let's do some lips. For line lip liner, I'm gonna use a bit of Mac Chestnut. Okay, yeah, I know I use the same like three lip liners all the time. It's what I like and it's what works for me. So we're gonna take a little bit of Mac Chestnut. Told you we're doing vampy lip today. A little smudge roo Now we can take our lipstick. Again, Vampire Love from Revlon. Oh yeah. What a perfect pairing. And that is the look all done. Here's a little close-up of it. We were going vampire today. Inspired by the lipstick. What can I say? 
So yeah, let me know down below your at least like a top three favorite songs because I'm super nosy. And if you're familiar with any of the bands I mentioned, if you have like a uh, recommendation that you think I would enjoy based on that, let me know that down below also because uh, ain't nothing wrong with discovering some new music and I could use something new to listen to. I've been listening to the same music for the last 20 years almost. I think it's time maybe to expand my repertoire just a little bit <laughs> in the musical sense because, yeah, I have truly been listening to the same music for about, oh, geez, some of that for the last 30 something years. <laughs> yeah, if I'm, if I'm 37, yeah, I've been listening to some of those songs since I was in like, since I could listen to music. So if you have any recommendations of something you think I might like, let me know down below and just let me know your top five favorite songs and I'll go give them a listen and see if I like them too. I'm, I'm just kind of curious now. So this is our, our vampire vibe makeup for today. Thanks for hanging out and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye now. <laughs>